Good evening, everybody. Hi. So there we are. All right, so you're ready for chapter 17? I haven't muted you yet. We still would have people joining us. Death. <laughs> Death is over. So it's another chapter, it's another life. <laughs> All right, so um, as we have others joining us, we're slowly coming in. Let's see if we have any questions. No questions. Okay. How many up and out stay? Okay, people. So we start with the we we'll start with the prayer. Okay. You wanna wait? Go ahead. All right, so let's start with the prayer as the others join us. Close your eyes, connect down to the palate. Feel yourself in the presence of the Supreme Being, all the great teachers, especially our teacher, Grandma Sutra. Feel gratitude, respect, and love for all that we've received, especially those of us who are pranic healers and are happy yogis. The foundation in pranic healing has given us a great advantage while we read these amazing books. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grandma Sutra, Koksui, to Lord Maha Guruji Mele, to all the great ones, to all the holy masters, holy gurus, to the great beings of knowledge, light, and wisdom, especially to great teachers and masters of theosophy, to the angels and beings of communication, our respective internets and Wi-Fis, to our soul and divine self. We humbly ask for your great, great blessings, for your light, for your love, for your wisdom, all through the session. Bless us with greater clarity and understanding of these priceless teachings. Help us to absorb and assimilate this knowledge and use it as we offer ourselves as instruments to do your work. Let thy will be done, not the urges of our lower nature. Thank you, thank you, thank you. With gratitude, respect, and love, we thank you. Atma Namaste. Welcome everybody to the session today. So today's session is about healing, right? So when I was reading this, I was thinking, you know, Master Chua has put it in such a simple way. And so I mentioned that also on my Facebook page. I said, it's amazing how, uh, you know, even in this day and age, Master could make it so simple that probably anybody, um, even the lay person in, in, a, in a small town um, back in our tiny districts or even villages probably will understand it. Whereas this is quite complex sometimes. Anyways, so to start with it, we, we are going to chapter 17 on healing. It says, as we remember from an earlier chapter, that when someone is really healthy, right? That person, the prana that he absorbs through the spleen, there's excess of that. Remember, we were talking about that rosy, uh, rose color prana. So he has excess of that, which he just releases out of him. So they say, if you want to get well, you should have one of those around you. And if you have people like this who are healthy around you, you will also stay healthy because you'll constantly absorb the excess that they release. And so it says that this person, throws off from his body a vital emanation that can be absorbed by others. And so this vital energy can, like they mentioned here, it can be absorbed unconsciously or automatically. As we know in pranic healing, there is that exchange of energy that happens from the higher to the lower level. So it does happen either automatically or as we say, uh, can be absorbed uh, unconsciously. Or they say you can actually direct it. Uh, unconscious. Yes, I think the word was unconscious. I have to look for it. Now. Wait, this person is unconscious. No, it happens unconsciously. You're not conscious of it. Un okay, Amit, you're well, right. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, entirely unconscious. 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 Uh, okay. The process is entirely unconscious. <laughs> yes. Not the person. No, I was confused. I was genuinely confused. I thought he said unconsciously. Okay, fine. Yes, the process happens unconsciously or. Uh, <laughs> subconsciously by the people right? okay subconsciously by the people unconsciously in the process yeah so uh, moving on 
So what happens is uh, it can, sh can also be done consciously by this person who has this excess energy, who's really healthy and directed to another, right? So they're talking about these two methods. And so uh, moving on to the second paragraph where they say that this current of pr prana through, the, through your will, right? Through your intent, through your mind's intent, you can actually direct uh, this vital force and pour it into a person who requires this energy. So there are different ways of doing it. Now, interestingly, they keep calling this person the observer. But anyway, let's move on. So, so they say that if you look at the patient or the person who is unwell, they say that the spleen obviously is not functioning well, correct? Because that's the, uh, the instrument through which the prana kind of gets uh, to every part of the body, especially to the uh, respective chakras. And so it says here that the spleen is not working properly and so uh, if you help this person by giving them this excess energy regularly till its machine, right? For example, the spleen and the respective chakra starts functioning by itself on its own, st staying healthy, that person will definitely recover back to good health, right? And so they say uh, the healing of the weak by the strong may thus be achieved. So this can be done by people. Now, remember this book is written, what? A hundred, almost hundred years ago. Yeah, 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 a little less than hundred, maybe four, five years less. So they're talking about this concept, and and if you look at it, uh, the technique that we are using today, yes, uh, pranic healing is just about thirty-three years old. Uh, Master Cho has actually brought this to life. Now, how many others were using it? Can I make drumstick keys? Can I make drumstick keys? I forgot about that. Sorry. Huh? All right, so keeping that in mind, we realize that uh, the healing is possible. And so as was mentioned, by merely being physically close to the person, by mere physical proximity, the excess energy is then absorbed by the person who's not so well or unhealthy at that point. The process being entirely, as Amit corrected me, uh, entirely unconscious and automatic or subconsciously being absorbed by the person. And so in pranic healing, we call it an energy vampire, yeah, because they just absorb this. In, not intent, uh, no intention to intently take that, just happens. Or it may be assisted and expedited uh, to, almost, to almost any extent by unconscious effort, the effort being the mental will or the mental intent uh, to try and send this energy. So they say a lot can be done <clears throat> as you send this streams of energy down through a patient who's unwell. And so it says, this will then flood the patient system with vitalizing energy or the operator, I know why the person's called the operator, may direct the flow to a particular portion. So it could be through the entire body. So for example, when you look at evangelists, if you look at the Christian community and they have these prayer meetings, you know, they do it for days and then uh, the person who's standing there, the, the head of that entire congregation, he would call on people and then the amount of energy that he has, because he has excess is pouring out of him, he just touches them, for example, on the forehead or the head. And the whole body, you know, it's flooded with this, this amazing energy and many of them get healed, right? So it's just him transferring it with intent to heal this person of the problem that he or she has. He has no clue how it's working, but luckily we do know how it works. And so he may then pour it down. Yes, as they say, the patients uh, get like coppice streams of vitality going through them. Or you may decide not to send it to the whole body, but say, for example, they have an issue with asthma, maybe only towards the respiratory system. Yes, and more specifically towards the air tube and maybe the lungs. So you may direct it also to a specific area. That's what they mentioned. And, uh, and so what you do is you just increase the circulation of prana just in that area till it becomes healthy enough. You don't have to do it for the whole body. And so it says sufficient prana to cure many minor diseases. So if the person has something like asthma, you might have to do it for the entire body. But if it's something like just a common cold, just that local area flushed with this excess prana might actually heal them. 
Now, if you look at the technique, uh, the closest thing that I know of, uh, not that I know all the healing techniques, is something like Reiki, where you just energize that part, for example, the area between the eyebrows with excess energy. And through that excess energy, that minor ailment gets healed because of uh, the prana that continues to move through it. Yes, sufficient, obviously, to allow the minor diseases to heal. So they also mentioned that all nervous disease imply a dangled condition, jangled condition of the etheric double, which means the etheric double is not in its right state. Something is wrong with it. And it says this is also the cause of many people who have digestive and sleep disorders, yeah? sleeplessness and digestive issues. So when you and I go through this, we definitely realize something is wrong also with our etheric double. Remember, there's a very important body, the etheric double, which also transfers energy back and forth and communication back and forth. And so it's important to remember that the nervous diseases, yes, is also got to do with the etheric double not being in, in good condition, which also then causes digestive troubles and sleeplessness. Headache, however, they say is caused because of some issue with either uh, the blood or the vital fluids within the system. And sometimes this is called magnetism. Didn't get that. So strong currents directed by the healer. Now the person is called a healer in this. So in the same paragraph, they seem to have changed who the person is. They say the operator earlier directs the flow. And then here they say the healer uh, through the head of the sufferer. So suddenly the patient becomes the sufferer. Will wash away the congested matter and the headache will disappear. And so the energy, remember, that is sent. Uh, interestingly, if you look at it from what we remember in, in this etheric double, if you touch the forehead, and those of us who are pranic healers, we know that's the nervous system. Yes, and so that's why when these, these Christian healers touch the forehead, sometimes conditions completely sometimes disappear. Hopefully it's not too crazy. Uh, and they use uh, not just prana, they use uh, divine prana as well, or divine energy. And so the headache in this case may completely disappear and so for me when i look at it uh, there is some relevance to what we in pranic healing learn where we talk about either you can heal for minor ailments only the local area or if it's a chronic problem then probably you have to look at the whole body right our system is slightly different but the point is the whole body needs to be treated for chronic ailments and for minor ailments just the local area or a particular organ which is affected could be treated yes so um, I'll stop at that and hand it over to Amit. It's fairly simple. Uh, if you've done uh, pranic healing or you've read the book, and if you haven't, please read the book because it's very simple if you read it. It's just elementary healing works. What is it, what is very, um, what's very good is number one, in the first paragraph, he's talking about um, the recovery being expedited. Right, so you're talking about increasing the rate of healing, all right, which is basically uh, the second uh, principle of healing or pranic healing. Okay, um, then in the second paragraph, they're talking about you see, the thing is that I had asked this question before in the I think it was chapter two or chapter, yeah, or something like that. The person requires vital energy from someone else and this excess what do they call it vigorous health uh, <laughs> or vital emanation as you may call it is being absorbed but he does not define what is vital emanation is it prana because in the earlier chapter he's, he was after it's passed through the nervous system this rose colored thing is absorbed because otherwise you're always in vital emanation anyway right you're always in a field of um, ocean of ocean energy. of energy and they've talked about the permanent atom how it's fused and everything so then uh, is it because this is partially digested that it's easier uh, or it's a special nutritive prana or something um, we're not sure uh, master chua never clarified he never asked he just said you know people absorb energy but what he does is most people depending on what they want they they uh, the, the reason why they might not, uh, when he says cured, I don't think he has spoken about what type of illnesses, right? You see, an illness uh, could be a deficiency of anything. It's not necessarily physical. Okay. It might be uh, an emotional, it might be a, a combination of illnesses. So if, uh, so this is working with cords and I'll be interested whether they speak about this in later chapters. 
um, because most like most people, whether they know you or not, uh, or whether they uh, they know you, but whether they know of energy or not, if they know what the solar plexus or not, most people in general they start to cord your if you know what a cord is, they start to have an energetic link between you and your solar, solar, your solar plexus and their solar plexus, usually the back. Okay. Remember so, we spoke about the dead, when you're dying, there's that cord to the solar plexus, something like that. <clears throat> so once this, now the reason they do the solar plexus is because that's the will center, that's the power center for most people, in most people. So, so that's where they absorb uh, a, a lot of energy from you. So if you're a person who's very dynamic and you check your back solar, um, then they would probably cord you there and you'd have a lot of cords there if you know how to check. All right. Then if you need, if you're somebody, uh, if you're a boss and you're going to a company and you meet all your employees, they don't want maybe your energy, but they want your money. Right. So they might cord what we call the basic chakra. Right. So, and if you're uh, going to a nightclub and you look really good, uh, then they might not want uh, physical power. They'll want sexual energies. So they are uh, got, uh, um, you know, cords. cords in the sex chakra. So it just depends, right? And through that cord, uh, energy starts to transfer. And Sorry, I just think of Master Joe's joke. He would say, if you don't have any cords in your sex chakra, you should be worried. <laughs> yeah, I used to joke. Even after the class, he would scan. He's like, okay, let's see who's the winner today. <laughs> Who would have more, <laughs> you know? Uh, but uh, but you know, it's normal. They don't. It's not nothing malicious. Yeah. It's just just the energy flows from a higher potential to a lower potential. Uh, so that's just how they how they do that. And it's an unconscious process. An unconscious process. <laughs> it's but an not an unconscious. But they're very, <laughs> even when they're unconscious, they'll still be absorbing prana. So and, both are. And correct. it's an automatic process, but subconsciously done. Yeah, that's one of the things about being powerful people call yeah, you a lot true. and it doesn't mean necessarily also sometimes it's interesting it's not because a person is even handsome right uh, but because he or she is uh, very sensitive and very understanding of you sometimes that physical attraction also manifests as a god on this chakra so then so there are a lot of things in this first page uh, if you don't if you've never read pranic healing uh, number one the recovery is expedited number two uh, they've not mentioned by the body, but you know, uh, number two, the prana uh, follows your intention. Now, this is what we call uh, the principle of uh, directability in uh, pranic healing. So let's look at this. So number one, um, in acupuncture, in acupressure, reflexology, the principle is the same the healer intentionally or unintentionally uses. So it could be intentional, it could be unintentional, all right? Uh, now when it's intentional, obviously it'll go through the meridian and to the affected part. That's what Sumi was talking about. And also, this is very, very important. This is one of the concepts of distant healing. Um, energy, and, and all healing actually, uh, pranic uh, energy follows where your thought or intention is focused. When you think of a person, the pranic energy goes to him. Therefore, energy follows thought or energy follows your will or your intention. I don't like to use the word will because if you think of the word will, your energy becomes too hard and then um, it's not very conducive for healing. You know, uh, healing is soft, right? So one of the things they have not mentioned here is the principle of receptivity. All right, which we will come to. Uh, but by directing the currents onto a patient who is depleted of strength owing to the fact that it's clean, blah, 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 um, and the person recovers. So what is very important is number one, they talk about this energy follows where thought and intention is focused. Number two, they're talking about how healing takes place. Healing takes place through transference of energy from a healer to the patient. That's one of the very important topics we talk about in the beginning of a pranic healing class or when we teach healing. That if you cannot, if you don't have a way to transfer the energy, then you cannot do healing. <laughs> you need a, you need a medium to transfer it, right? They have not explained the medium, but they they've explained the concept. It's not that other medium we were talking about. Yeah, not that, not <laughs> the person who goes. <laughs> now the healing of the weak by the strong, uh, made us. Now when they talk about weak and strong, they're talking about energy level, okay, not muscles. <laughs> Just to be clear, not physical. Not physical. Okay. So even if, uh, say, Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, <laughs> wanted healing, we could heal him. <laughs> Although he might be physically more strong. I don't know now, but probably still now. Um, Maybe compared to most of us. 
Yeah. Now, um, the healing of the weak by the strong may thus be achieved in certain cases. Now, what cases? Who knows? <laughs> Merely by physical proximity, the process being neither entirely unconscious or automatic, blah, blah. blah. Sumi's explained all of this and all of this has been explained. Uh, but one thing you need to uh, understand is when they say in some cases, where is that? No? I don't know where you're reading. In certain so. cases. Okay, fine. In certain cases, okay, right? Certain in certain cases. cases, healing can be achieved. Is what do they mean by that? If the ailment is too severe, you cannot do healing? Or do they mean something else? All right? Because many times, Master Choa, there would be one patient, and um, Master Choa would be like, the patient would have problem. And the patient would be like, I want healing, I want healing, I want healing. So he says, uh, Master Choa is like, just say thank you. Right? He would say, say thank you. And the patient would say, thank you. <laughs> That's, you know, even the first time I heard it, it's a little bit odd. So you say, okay, thank you. And then you say, okay, move the part. Ah, the person is, is better. Okay. So the question is what happened? Master Chua's energy, or if you have a teacher with a tremendous amount of uh, vital emanation. <laughs> yes. Flowing out, obviously. <laughs> right? Um, then what happens is you're already in that vital emanation. So why are you not getting better? Why do you need healing? This is tied into the principle of receptivity. You might be in that aura of the person, but if you are not receptive to the energy, you won't absorb it. That sometimes after the class, Master Joe will be like, you know, so many people have health problems. If they only, if they only receptive and direct the energy, they're already in my aura. <laughs> the excess energy will go there. <laughs> you know, good quality energy. So, so I think the principle of whether he means, we don't know because he's not mentioned, but one of the factors definitely is receptivity, okay? So sometimes you notice some, some people, uh, it not only works physically, it works emotionally and mentally. Like you try and explain something to someone, they don't get it, they get angry with you. Then you ask someone else, hey, you know them better. <laughs> they have better rapport. Why don't you just talk to them? They say the exact same thing. And like, yeah, that makes sense. And you're like, what? I told you the same thing. That's not fair. So what is the difference? It's the same words. It's the, it's the rapport, it's the receptivity. Okay. Sometimes even with certain uh, doctors, I, I'm not very sure in India, but in the States, sometimes some doctors would be, who have been meditating for a long time, they have good energy. They would notice that some of the patients, they're so receptive to them that the, some of the symptoms would disappear. They're like, I don't know. I had some problem. They don't know. They don't remember really well. So that is like sometimes they cannot explain to me the problem because when they're in the aura, temporarily or at least they have some relief. So, so that is another issue. Now, merely to increase the circulation of prana is insufficient to cure minor diseases. What do they mean by that? Because all this time they've been talking about transferring the energy and circulating the energy. Now they're saying merely to circulate it is not enough. So then they don't explain. Anything else after that? <laughs> okay, anyway. So we obviously know there is cleansing required. Okay, so we'll talk about that. I think it'll come up it later. It comes later. Yeah. All nervous diseases implied a jangle condition of the etheric double. So that the cause. Now, nervous system disorders How in... How do you read that again? Sufficient? Here it says sufficient to cure. Oh, I really? Mean... Oh, sorry. It says sufficient. Sorry, sorry. My mistake. <laughs> no, I thought maybe my, my book was No, no, no. Different. Merely to increase the circulation is Even sufficient to for cure. For minor areas. Okay, for minor, for minor. Yes, that is true. Um, now, jangle condition, jangled of the etheric double. Usually what happens is um, for nervous system disorders, based on my observation, for those who are pranicillas, they go forehead. Okay, that's very good for them. Forehead is good. But as you practice more, you realize that it's not only the forehead, it's actually the flow of energy from the lower to the upper chakras and from the, from the basic to the back head and from the sex chakra, if you know what they are, to the uh, crown. So the flow of energy or the circulation of prana is jangled. <laughs> it's all fuzzy and it's not, it's not a clear circulation. So one of the most important things to do in a nervous system disorder um, is to... Uh, re-establish the proper flow of energy from the lower chakras to the upper chakras and from the upper centers to the lower centers. Remember for the, for the tree, the nutrients have to flow properly. If the roots are weak, 
or they're not able to, you have a problem with your distributive system, you might have air, you might have sunlight, you might have water, you might have everything, but it's not gonna be a healthy tree. So this is my uh, personal experience with healing um, nervous system, more than one, talking about a lot. So usually it's, it's the circulation of energy. Um, you know, when Master Cho would ask uh, when the gatherings are there, this healing, he would say, Do you, who has headaches? Who has backaches? Even if you don't have a backache or a headache, we'll stand up. <laughs> yeah, I stood up for everything. Yeah, so we stand up for every problem that he would say, you know, because in general, most people have these issues, the common ones. And even if we don't have it, we'll stand. He says, really, all of you have this issue? <laughs> it's just for us to be, you know, just to be aware, be receptive and absorb the energy. Though we could have done it sitting, we want to stand and acknowledge that we're taking the energy. So that was quite uh, interesting when Master Cho is around. Go ahead. Sorry. When you, uh, what, you, know the, you know why he would ask, what I think one of the main reasons he would ask people to stand up, of course you can heal when you're sitting. Because when somebody tells you to do something and you do it, it shows that you're compliant, you're receptive. Yeah. Right? So it's uh, sort of, uh, not a trick, but a very easy way without explaining what energy is, is to get the patient to just follow your instruction. Okay, you stand up, you stood up. If you scan, energy is automatically flowing from them. So the person gets healed very, very fast. It's a nifty trick. Anyway, um, headaches are usually caused. Okay, yeah, you can go on. That's that. All right, so let's go on. So uh, moving on to the next paragraph. These methods are comparatively simple and by no means difficult to apply, right? Uh, it sounds like that. But if you didn't know pranic healing, it still is very vague, right? So through a skillful healer, now they mentioned that if you're clairvoyant, which means uh, at this point, they really do not know about the entire system in general, for the general public. So they say, if you are cl clairvoyant, you can improve on this enormously, which means you can do better because you can actually see where the organs are, probably where the energy centers are, where the blocks are. And so that's why I'm telling you, uh, when I was reading this, I was thinking Masucho has made it so simple. So even if I'm not clairvoyant, using the sense of touch, I'm able to still know without seeing which chakra is not okay. Probably even the organ, is it heavy? Is it light? Is there still a block, right? So even the simplest of all uh, tend, to, uh, tend to be able to heal very easily, right? So whether we've taught someone in a village in India or in a small town in a different country or even a big city, right? And if she or he is just a, uh, say for example, just someone who runs the house, not even goes to work or, or, or runs a business, he or she can still follow these very simple instructions. So they say one such improvement, um, which, de which demands some knowledge of anatomy and physiology. And so that's why I think Masucho has been so comprehensive in the way he's put the entire system together, that initially he just talks to us about energy body, right? He says, okay, this is where it is, and he'll tell you where, and most of us know roughly where most of the organs are. But as you want to become more of a proficient healer in the system, he has introduced the associated, uh, associate uh, pranic healers program, right? And in that program and in the following program, the certified pranic healers program, he does introduce anatomy and physiology, right? So in the earlier years, uh, we used to introduce it in the associate pranic healers certification program, but now we're introducing it later. So to have a general understanding, you know, when someone brings you a medical report, what is the normal BP supposed to be for a man, for a woman, for a young adult, for an older adult, right? Very simple things. If we can understand this, then we're able to help them better. If you know what the, um, uh, the, the uh, blood sugar le level is supposed to be in a particular person's body, right? All these things help us to become better healers. And so he's saying one is being uh, clairvoyant, which not all of us are, but it says it definitely helps for us to have a greater understanding of physiology and anatomy of a person. Now, it doesn't have to be to the depth of, you know, doctors who are also on this group. It just has to be very basic, very simple enough just for us to be able to do proper healing. Uh, Shidam would always say, he says, you, remember your kidneys are not here. <laughs> So that's his usual joke in the old days uh, when we used to teach together. Uh, the ki you need to know where the kidneys were. I remember when I was a, a, a child, I'm talking about maybe five, six. I honestly thought, you know, the bottoms that we have, those two were actually the kidneys because they said it's like roundish. So I always thought, and I used to wonder, I was like, oh my God. And I remember hearing people saying that, you know, the kidney is going to be removed. I was wondering how they're going to sit, you know, one is going to be fully flat. <laughs> 
but you know, a kid's imagination. I just think uh, they were in front because you know the, <laughs> the 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 anatomy. You know, the the model would be like the kidneys are. You see, so I used to be like, look like under here. <laughs> like no, they're in the back. I said no, they're in the front. I saw them in the front. So anyway. I, I went all the way down to the bottom, literally. These yeah. are pre-technology days where you can't Google stuff, huh? Correct. <laughs> you I have to understand that yes. we had only pictures <laughs> and i remember when we had this uh, the britannia encyclopedia come home and we had those lovely plastic sheets which showed you you know the the muscle the muscles on one the, the skeletal system on one and various others i was just so excited i was like wow you can see this because the only time we could see it is when biology class and not all the time would the teacher allow us to go into the lab so anyway coming back so physiology <laughs> and anatomy would help us and then they say if you can make a mental picture of the diseased organ, right? And uh, Im imagine that it's becoming healthy. So as you project this prana, they're saying that if you can imagine, say for example, it is a kidney, since we're all talking about kidneys, and the person is having uh, some problem with the kidneys and it's not functioning 100%, then you, you visualize the kidneys, because by then you know about the anatomy. You visualize these two bean-like things, healthy right? As you direct the energy. So remember in pranic healing, especially pranic psychotherapy, we say you need to create a positive image of the patient. Now, this is not just the positive image of the patient, but also the positive image of the organ that needs to be healed by you, the healer, or what? The operator, you, the operator. <laughs> okay. And so it says, the strong thought will mold the etheric matter because we are working only with the etheric matter. So as the etheric matter follows that image that you have created of the healthy uh, kidneys, then the the natural way in which that organ will function after that, right, will try to take on that shape that you have created etherically. So etherically, that's what you created, the desire form or what you and I would call in pranic healing thought form. And this will help nature, right, nature to build new tissues much more rapidly, and I think easily, which would otherwise uh, be possible, maybe it would take longer to get this done. And he says a still more effective method would be to actually create, right? Create the organ in the mental matter. Now, this is a little complex even for me. So you create it on the mental matter. Then you bring in the astral matter and build it into that. And then you bring the etheric matter, build it into it. And then you bring the gaseous matter and the fluidic matter and the solid matter. Uh, I think by then I'll, I'll probably just collapse. So using, <laughs> using all these materials available in the body, supplied, uh, supplying from outside any deficiencies. So you try and use whatever you can. Uh, I'm not sure if you're using also the patients. Why are you laughing? At me? No, I'm, I'm wondering whether to talk about that. Oh, okay. You have something else. Okay. No, no, no. All right. And so you have this whole thing that's created. So the mental, you have the astral, you have the etheric, and every part of the physical, yeah, the solid liquid and gaseous uh, material all packed into it and he says if you can create it like that then the manifestation the healing process yeah the manifestation of a healthy body will be much faster yes uh, but for us thought form itself is that if what we understand with master Chua, that's basically it the thought form cannot be only ethnic matter if there is astral there is mental. So all matters come into a thought form. But anyway, let's see what Amit has to say. No, I don't yeah? want to talk about it. You're not going to talk about it. No, I think trouble is recorded. <laughs> He's going to get into trouble. All right. So uh, the methodical and effective way to set to work to heal uh, magnetically is as follows, right? So And, and so they give you uh, magnetic healing suddenly. So yeah. I'll, I'll come to that in a bit. Let Amit just finish these two paragraphs. Okay. Um, so the... Oh, oh. Wait. My okay, okay, I'll get it. Okay. Uh, these methods are comparatively simple and by no... Okay, so let me explain this. Uh, though a skillful healer, especially if clairvoyant, can improve on them enormously. Uh, one such improvement uh, which demands knowledge of physiology. Okay. Now, why clairvoyant? Obviously, so you can see where the problem is, right? So you can uh, energetically diagnose the patient in terms of uh, where energetically they have, have issues or the energy is stuck or the circulation is not okay or where the, what do they call it, jangle condition lies uh, or the source of the jangle condition. But the, 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 the fact of the matter is uh, clairvoyancy is not very practical, number one, because most people are not clairvoyant. Uh, number two, even if you're clairvoyant, you have to be trained to be clairvoyant. Uh, what does that mean? You see, you have to have a certain amount of emotional and mental stability 
and training before you can see um, subtle matter through a very, very uh, accurate manner. Let's just be in that manner. Because you have to understand, if you're very emotional and, uh, you know, uh, if you're a very emotional person, then you have to, okay, you have to look outside your own aura before you see someone else's, <laughs> right? So you might think there's dirty energy there, but it's not their dirty energy, it's yours, <laughs> okay? So it's like wearing, you know, green sunglasses instead of transparent, so, or dirty sun, uh, glasses, and then you think there are issues or what's red will seem yellow, you know, the colors will change, so not very accurate. I think it is page, uh, so, so what are the other ways you can uh, diagnose energetically? One of the best ways is by using the hand chakras. All right, and this is a technique we call scanning and pranic healing. I think it is explained on page 53, the last paragraph in the Miracles Through Pranic Healing book. Oh, um, ancient science and arts of pranic healing. Ancient science and arts of pranic healing, yes. Um, I think it's page 53, last paragraph. So, um, so in that one, it talks about how the hand can be used to detect um, changes, subtle changes in the energy body and how it's so important for healing. And in the Possible Miracles book, he, Master Chua emphasizes, the Golden Lotus Sutra, the importance of scanning. The, the basic book is for beginners, so, you know, he says, okay, no problem, if you can't scan, you know, no worries, don't, you, know, don't, you can still heal, you can. But to have really good quality, you should be able to at least uh, sense or feel something, right? Uh, something you have to yeah. feel energy now what they're talking about is uh, anatomy and physiology uh is to make mental picture and all of this yeah. the strong thought will mold into a trick matter into desire form now this is basically um now which will help nature to build up who is nature what not nature the physical elemental or the nature spirits or the physical beings body. that's an interesting question <clears throat> Yeah. Um, now, what he's talking about here is basically what we in advanced pranic healing call visual healing, visual healing, all right, uh, visual instructive healing. Now, that can not only be done by, by a healer, it can also be done by the patient, all right. Now, the strong thought form will mold into etheric matter, um, build up new terms much more rapidly than otherwise would, all right? And then make it as it should be in health. That is very important, all right? And some anatomy is known. So I'll just quickly show you, um, just so that it's faster. Pictures, photographs, or posters. Now you have to understand this is 1925 book. So pictures were not as common as it is today. <laughs> Right, Especially even in, even in 1989, 80s and 90s, it wasn't as common as it is today. Right, yeah. we had to really count because we had only 36 shots, you know. <laughs> so we'd be like, "Ah, oh, you wasted the pictures." <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so especially if a kid gets a hold of your camera and then you realize that <laughs> half is finished, <laughs> like what? <laughs> anyway, so so pictures, photograph, and you have to develop the whole reel. You can't just delete the middle portion, right? Anyway, so pictures, photograph, posters can be used as a form of in visual instructive healing. The patient has to look at the picture repeatedly for a prolonged period. Now, why? So that they don't forget it. So the constant look, it's just like how you need healing every few, uh, you know, thrice a week or every day, depending on how severe it is. You have to keep looking at the picture. The rate of recovery for tuberculosis patient can be further hastened by looking at the picture of healthy lungs. Wow. Now, of course, if you're a healer, you could use a picture or image, uh, which could be actual or symbolical. Um, symbolical means your thought. Now, um, now, actual or literal picture requires obviously a much more thorough background in anatomy. Medical doctors will of course find this approach easier. Uh, for people with limited an anatomical value, it's easier to use symbolic picture images. Visualize done for about 10 to 15 minutes per session and once or several times a day until healing is completed. So just give that to your patient to do 15 minutes every day. Mm -hmm. Mm. So that is there. Okay. Now, uh, what are they talking about? This uh, more thorough method to create an organ in mental matter and to build. It sounds so cool when they talk like this. I should learn to talk like this. People will be confused, but they'll be impressed, like Master says. 
it's just the language in those days, right? People were very proper. Um, that is so confusing. No, if you've done, um, okay, one level, all right? If you've done this course called Kriya Shakti, there's this technique called a dash dash board technique. Dashboard technique, right? Right? And you put it on a certain place, right? Now that is, and you put it with a certain color, that is etheric. And then you put what you want, a picture that is mental. And when you see it, it in, in, evokes uh, emotion in you. So it starts from the mental, then you have em emotional, and then you have etheric. And then the, the other part, and, and anyway, that should give you an idea of what is happening here, all right? Now, please don't do this for putting lungs and stuff on top of this and say, yeah, you know, we were discussing the three double. It's only a portion so that, it, you know, sort of you can understand how it can be done, but the technique is not there. Right. Also, in, in general, most people say if you want uh, to achieve something, then you put it like on your fridge. So a place that you would see frequently. So while uh, this lady would say, while she's making her coffee in the morning, she's brewing her coffee, she would just look at the fridge as, as to what she wants in her life. So say, for example, in this case, she was saying uh, she wants to become a writer. She wants to write a book. And so she has certain visuals that help her achieve that. And she says, usually in a couple of years, she achieves most of, the, most of what she um, dreams of or plans, right? And so the, the point is every day, right? Regularly. It, and that's why he says 15 minutes every day. So I'm sure brewing how long does it take? A few minutes? For what? A coffee. Yeah, I, you know, yeah. Like, uh, like a double boil, like the espresso. I don't know. It okay, so anyway, it takes a few minutes. So every day, a few minutes, she is constantly looking at it. And then if she wants to add something more, she adds. And she keeps making that the way she wants to uh, see it and looks at it. And like he says, there are other things that go into it. And it actually materializes. It physicalizes in her life. Oh, that's surprising because if you put it on any place, that would just be emotional, and mental and emotional. Uh, no, I'm saying energy. in general, this is another technique. But to get the etheric, you know what to do. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There's a certain. Yes, vision boards. Two things, correct. right? Uh, yeah. yeah. You cannot talk about this here. Anyway. How do you do <laughs> vertigo spots on the whole body? Ah, you, you Google Korean glass skin. <laughs> and you put it on. On the fridge or, or on your, you know, in the morning when you wake up and you see yourself, you know, just put that picture there. And that's what you want. That's, that's a kind of body you want, skin. But you have to be careful because then you're linking to the person also, huh? That is true. Yeah, if you've done Kriya Shakti, you know the, the, anyway, you get the whole package. <laughs> All right, now, um, okay, in my understanding, excess energy might uh, really not mean healer's excess energy, but rather a healer would be channel of this energy flowing, actually. No, in general, they're talking about etheric prana, their own energy. You have to understand that external qigong, or what you call a water pump approach, transferring energy from the atmosphere of the air, to other parts of the person without using your uh, prana is actually was quite rare in ancient time. Even if according to Master Shura, the teacher knew it, he would not teach the students that technique. The students would be doing the internal Qigong technique, but the teacher will say, see how powerful I am, I'll heal 10 patients, no problem. And he would not teach that technique, it's proprietary technique. Okay, so you know, what we take as granted today was not so obvious before. If you look at many of the Japanese uh, animes, or if you look at, what? Sorry. anyway, I watch them. So if you look at the, you know, they, they have this magic and all, and each mag, uh, each magician is connected to a certain element. So that that's like, you know, healing with elements and stuff, yeah. uh, but they don't heal with it. They, you know, attack, manifest things anyway. So they have a certain amount of magic power that they have. And they say, oh, I'm exhausted. I don't have that much magic power. If only they knew the external approach, they would be able to have unlimited magic power. And they do explain, uh, talk about this as a very, very rare thing, uh, once, once or twice. So if you watch movies and stuff, you'll see this happening. They run out of juice, as they call it. <laughs> what? Jesus. Right. So let's move on. Uh, we'll, we'll do one small part. We were hoping to finish this. Yeah, we'll finish it. No, we won't. You won't finish it, my dear. I spoke less today. I you said. spoke less. Yeah, that's true. You spoke less. Okay. So the next one is uh, the most effective way in getting this patient of yours 
um, more receptive to an extent, I guess. That's why they're doing this. So they say an effective and methodical way to set uh, to work that is healing. Uh, they call it magnetically. Is to try and see to it either the patient is lying down or sitting, right? And so they say uh, if the person is sitting, you want to have a nice easy chair. I didn't know they had easy chairs there, but anyway, easy chair with the armrest flat so the person can sit relaxed. And then they say that the healer sits sideways uh, on the side, right? Beside the person, but on a slightly, slightly elevated <clears throat> chair. And so they say, um, and what the, the healer does at this point, he's able to then access the entire body. He starts to make passes. Okay, now this is not the, ex the passes we know of yeah, between boy and girl. No, that also passes. has transference of energy. Of course it does. Still but we're healing. not talking about that here as an operator, right? So you make passes with your hands, <laughs> yes, all over the body. Or if necessary, you can also do it in a specific area. And so the passes is basically what Master Cho teaches us uh, with reference to... Uh, cleansing right and they say you take this right you when you when you pass your hand over uh, you then make an intent so if you are a pranic healer when you read that if you read the way master George put it it's so simple right so anyway now you pass your hand over the person with intent to then withdraw from the patient what you call congestion or the diseased etheric matter Right. So the disease etheric matter is then with your hand as it passes with intent is collected. Now, when you collect it, they say you have to then uh, dispose of it properly. So they say, see to it that it's out of, you know, not not anywhere close to you, the healer or the patient. However, at that the first part, they don't talk about it. Later on, they say maybe you should just throw it. Yes. Into water and then dispose of the water properly. However, coming back to where we are here, then they say you, these passes may be made without actually touching the patient, right? And that you and I understand as pranic healers that you can actually do this without touching the physical body of the patient because the etheric body is not necessarily uh, inside the body, but outside the physical dense body. And so they say you can pass it without touching, though it is often an assistance uh, to lay the whole hand on the skin gently and lightly. So for me, if you look at uh, the technique of Reiki, which Master Cho mentions, he says it started a uh, hundred plus years ago. It was the foundation because without Reiki and how it broke grounds uh, to help people use what is called the energy system, pranic healing wouldn't have found its way through to, as easy. To get people at least to believe that there's something there, you can't see it and it's there. You know, there is something. Correct. They did break the ground for us. So coming back. So that is probably maybe probably closer to what I understood because that's the only other um, thing that I learned when I was in college was uh, this concept of placing the hand on the body gently right there. No passing of hands. Yeah. There was no movement at this point. They say just the whole hand on the skin gently and lightly. So they say after each pass, the operator, now again, it's become the operator. Must Different take, authors. Must take care. No, in this previous paragraph, it was, Let these are two people. This one is Leadbeater, but I think this one is Crawford. Yeah, because in the same paragraph, there's Operator yeah, I here think, and Healing. Or here. maybe Powell and Leadbeater. Okay, so I'm, I'm not sure of that because this book doesn't really... Sorry, we're just looking at references. Smooth operator. So, yeah, Smooth Operator. So, uh, touching the patient. Okay, after each pass, the operator must take care to throw off from himself the etheric matter that he has withdrawn from the patient. Yes, otherwise some of it may remain in his own system and he may presently find himself suffering uh, with a complaint similar to that of the patient that he just cured, right? And so this is what we call, and I think Amit was talking about, transference of energy. Not just good healthy energy towards a patient, but even unhealthy energy for the patient can get transferred to the healer. So we have to be aware of that. And so they say, for example, if the, the healer has just treated someone with a toothache or an elbow pain, he'll notice that once a patient is gone, then suddenly he has a toothache or uh, the same elbow pain, right? And so the operator who neglects to throw off the deceased energy, basically dispose of, as we would say, the dirty energy properly, he may extract um, serious illness, especially when he's treating a lot of patients. And Masacho also mentions that uh, there are in the, uh, especially in the Chinese tradition, he says many of these great healers died at a very young age. Yes, so in their 30s, I think 40s. I'm hoping it's 40s. 
because they got they got contaminated so badly that their bodies fell ill and uh, they died of that chronic illness. Yeah, I'll I'll leave that. Uh, the the example given given by AP Senate is quite interesting. I thought so. This healer basically heals this person of chronic uh, rheumatoid uh, okay rheumatism. Yes, and then after that the uh, patient decides to move somewhere in Europe. Now, interestingly, the healer then dies. Once the healer dies, suddenly this entire healing that he did for this person who had rheumatism, I presume it was completely cured, goes back to the patient. Basically saying that while healing, because he did not dispose of this energy effectively, yes, properly, it was probably hovering around him. And then when he died and there was no place to kind of hover around and, and stay, he decided to go to the main source, which was the lady who had rheumatoid, sorry, who had rheumatism. And so she then contracts this disease again, right? So as healers, uh, for us in pranic healing, it's, it's very easy because the, if you go to a class of pranic healing, the instructor will constantly tell you, you know, use the means to dispose properly. Yeah, I don't throw it around. And uh, some of them can get a little uh, hyper about it as well, but they will constantly keep telling you, you have to dispose of it properly. Dispose of properly, yes? Now, once you finish with your healing, they also mention here when we talk about water, don't forget to wash your hands also with water. Yep. Uh, however, they don't tell you what the water does. It just says, wash your hands or dispose it into water. But anyway, we'll come to that a little later. I'll just ending with AP Senate's no, you can curious you case. This, like, you, this one you said already. You just said wash your hand and Okay, fine. All right. So then I'll just go to the next part. No, no, we don't know. No, this part. Which yeah, I you mentioned. finished it. Yeah. Finished. So they say that one of the ways to dispose, they do say that you have to see to it that it's away from you and does not, it's not anywhere close to you, right? In the previous <coughs> paragraph. However, they say it, to make it efficient or sufficient is to just jerk your hand, right? And, and move whatever energy that you uh, passed over the patient. Jerk it. Uh, sharply, that means, you know, in a hard motion, not like a gentle, you know, like that. Some people are very, very gentle and still sticking on their hand. So a little sharp and downward motion. And then they say, preferably throw it into a basin of water and after which dispose of the water. And uh, to make it even more effective, after you finish with the entire treatment, which is completed, then wash your hands with water before commencing the next, which means the next patient. And more, uh, and more positive part of the treatment. So whether you're moving to a next part that is affected or a next patient, preferably clean your hands or wash your hands in this case with water. That's what they recommend. And uh, pranic healers, you know, that is true, but it's just that we add something more to make it more effective. So keeping the energy away from you is very important. Disposing of it is very important as healers. Otherwise it can hover around. Now the problem is when you get weak, it can affect you. When you're healthy, more or less, it might be around, doesn't bother you. But when you get weak, uh, your emotional body, uh, immune system is not okay. That can attach itself if there's a vacuum within you. Yeah. Okay. okay. And then we let I don't think I have time. Uh, seven you minutes. Seven minutes. So I'll do as much as I can. Uh, two, three minutes over maybe. Okay. So methodical and effective way, because this is the main part of the chapter. Uh, yeah, because there are no questions for you. Is, yeah, that's good. What is magnetically? I knew that will come, so I'll, I'll talk about it. Yeah, we'll come so, to that um, later. The methodical and effective way to work heal magnetically, uh, the patient assumes a comfortable position, either sitting or lying down, and is instructed to relax as thoroughly as possible. <laughs> I don't, anyway, <laughs> relax! <laughs> anyway, uh, a very convenient meter is the easy chair with solid flat arms. I was imagining the... The patient's solid flat arms, and I realized it's one of those, you know, sit-back chairs, you know, the, the wooden with the, you know, the resort. Today, of course, it'll all be cushioned. Okay, 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 let me just that. The operator sitting sideways on the arms. What is it like? They sit like this on, on top of the arm of the chair and sideways here like that? Sideways on the arms? Yeah. I didn't understand it either. Okay. Sideways on the arms and thus being slightly above the patient. You know how awkward that would look? Please, why don't you relax and sit on this chair and I'll sit on the arm of the chair and clean you. <laughs> what is so disgusting? You, this is written in the book. I'm just trying to go through the book because I'm very visual. Okay, now question. Why sideways? Why, why, why sideways? Okay. And why magnetic? All right. So we'll talk about it. 
So I see it as, you know, these we easy did, chairs did. with that handle coming out. Yeah, and you sit on the handle, which you is sit on so the handle, which is just that side. I don't think on, it's anyway. On the arm. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> now, there is nothing magnetic about the hands. This is a big misconception. They call it magnetic healing, faith healing, all these healings. The left hand is not negative or receptive, and the right hand is not positive or projective. Both hands or hand chakras are capable of absorbing and projecting prana. It's just prana. Okay, if you go to this page, Mascho will explain about magnetic healing and why it's misunderstood. Now, when you are energizing or cleaning, actually, preferably don't stand directly in front of the patient. Why? You stand to the side to reduce the degree of contamination of disease energy from the patient. That's why you stand sideways. Is that okay? Right? Because when you're standing in front, most of the energy centers are here. So if you're standing in front, you project energy. Sometimes the chakra expels very fast. So it looks... It will come onto your face or on your body and it has an, uh, you know, you can get contaminated. So that is not very, very good. <laughs> All right. Um, so sideways, the operator makes passes over the hand, over the passes, uh, making an effort of the will to withdraw the patient from the patient, the congestion. Now, this is really important. I didn't get the quote, but there's a part... Um, uh, there is a part in the book that talks about, um... by the way, one of the concepts, we'll talk about it maybe next time. Um, but here it talks about, what? yeah, how Master Chua says it's critical for you to have intention when you're healing, when you're cleansing, to intend to absorb the dirty energy into your hand or to remove the dirty energy. It's critical. He uses the word critical with intention. So you have to read it in the basic book in the part of cleansing. You, okay. So now, um, most healers, they don't, they sweep very mechanically after they've been healing for some time. Although there's some intent, you know, subconscious intent and some visualization, it's not as effective. Uh, so there is, so you have to go back to how you're cleaning and make sure you're cleaning it properly. Get the area. And after each pass, the operator must take care to throw off himself, the etheric matter, blah, blah, blah. Many cases, okay, all this stuff. Now, this is contamination. This is actually the fact of cleansing. So here, the, the fact that they're talking of cleansing, but since they've not emphasized it, um, you know, it, it's very, very important. And also the uh, concept of contamination. Contamination, all right? When was bacteria discovered? I think like 330 years, 300 years ago, or 150 years ago, whatever. Um, you know, in Europe, I was reading, and I might be wrong, women who would do delivery had a high death rate who would go for delivery of uh, babies, right? Um, why? Was because they didn't have the principle of contamination of germs and, uh, you know, from patient to patient. So the doctor would be working on maybe a corpse and then with the same hands, they would go deliver the patient and then there would be sepsis, uh, you know, uh, and then the woman would die. Uh, and I heard the, um, what the mortality rate was very, very high. Um, before and I was reading they were celebrating the hundred years or something of this doctor I forgot his long Austrian name and he actually was implying that there might be these invisible germs or what he didn't call them that I don't know what he called them that could transfer from patient so what did they do they threw him out of the <laughs> community and the, at the city of course once they uh, found out about germs because he talked about it in the 1800s then they formally discovered it 19 something and then um, of course now they have a statue of him like all the <laughs> poor people who are ahead of their time okay that's why master Chua says we're living in a good day people don't throw us out or stone us they just say this guy's a little crazy yeah <laughs> it's, yeah. it's not as bad as you know 200 years back okay now just as there's something like disease causing germs there's uh, such thing as diseased energy Okay, um, when you remove the disease energy from the patient, the patient will improve. But just as diseased, uh, disease can be caused by, like disease can be caused by bacteria, right? We know this. So disease can also be transferred through disease energy. So you can get a disease through disease energy. Okay, um, so you have to wash your hands with water and salt thoroughly uh, before uh, and after or even during treatment, okay? now um, including the needles if you're practicing uh, acupuncture sorry also i think that's one of the reasons why they say maybe when you go to hospital you sometimes fall ill when you come back yeah yeah it's not just the germs so disease also can the also be called through. it's a breakthrough the pr concept of the principle of diseased energy is a breakthrough in energy healing 
It, it didn't exist that much before. It's as important as the discovery of disease causing germs. All right, so since you know that these germs cause disease, now you know there are certain disease energy that cause disease. All right, and this will, um, this will affect the concept of hygiene in the future. That's what I feel, all right? <clears throat> um, Amit from Kolkata has written it. Ah, Louis. No, 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 no. I would remember Louis. That sounds French. The Austrian. Like, oh, sorry, sorry for the Austrians, but it's a long name. I, I, I don't know. It was his doctor. I was reading in the paper one time. They were celebrating his birthday or something like that. Okay. Um, some people think that if they put some covering, they will be protected. That is partially true. You may be protected from germs, but you're not protected from dirty energy or diseased energy. Okay. So that's why many doctors feel fantastic after working uh, through the day <laughs> at the end of their shift. Actually, I knew many nurses. They would come to the center in the safe and just collapse. <laughs> they watched a like, long day. I said, okay, <laughs> cut your cords. Okay. Now, this is very important. And even the concept of cleansing is very important. You know, because of the discovery of germs uh, and antibiotics, a lot of lives have been saved. And that is one of the major contributions in medicine, right? Priceless contribution. The removing of diseased energy from the body is another major breakthrough, right? So transference of disease energy and removal of disease energy. These are two breakthroughs in energy healing that we've seen lately. When you remove these disease-causing germs uh, or disease energy from the person, the person gets much, much, fa well, much faster. Okay, so that is the whole concept. So, so I think just, uh, when you look at an operating theater, uh, we do talk about, uh, you know, they do a very good job of cleaning it. Uh, however, it would also be useful if you know someone who's going in for surgery to also ethically clean that space of diseased energy, right? So it becomes more conducive for whatever happens between patient and doctor and of course all the assistants and nurses and others uh, in that uh, okay. very crucial now, now they're talking about water and everything the water is not as effective all right uh, water is not enough so i don't understand the example we may we don't have time now so we'll go through it again uh, maybe later but um, some healers may experience the symptoms or ailments of their patient this is due to full absorption of the disease energy into the system of the healer traceable to first not washing the hands and arms after healing and second not using the disposal unit all right, and if you, this is example by Master Chua, if you get two bowls of water and put, put salt in one bowl, you don't put the uh, salt in the other bowl, water has a tendency to hold energy. It won't disintegrate the energy. It doesn't change the energy and neutralize the energy. It actually retains it in its form. So in fact, even after you come after six hours, one hour, one day, it will still be there. Okay, so uh, no, that's why you can take water from the Ganga, which is supposed to be, you see, it's not necessarily the Ganga itself that's holy, it's the energy that comes down while it passes through a certain point in the Himalayas or Himalayas. And this water is like a capa what? That's American. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so as it passes through this uh, whatever area, there's a downpour of divine energy and this water is like a capacitor. It grabs it and holds it. So that's why you can just take some water. You can take it from the Himalayas all the way to say Chennai and, and, and Kanyakumari, and when you scan it, there's still a lot of energy. All right, that's why holy water retains the energy. So the point is, <laughs> so if it can retain good energy, it can also retain bad energy. All right, so that's why we don't uh, go under a place where there's a lot of sewage water or the soil has been contaminated because the soil has a lot of water. So it holds a lot of the dirty energy. And um, we can talk more about this maybe a little bit later if we have time. Yeah. Corona is energy, I have no idea. But of course, there's an energetic aspect. I've not investigated it. But uh, I heard it's a good beer. I never liked it. Uh, <laughs> Poor Corona. Oh, it was one of the most popular ones in the States. Sure, 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 sure. <laughs> right. All right. Okay, so... so is Corona ah, Liu Hook. I think that's the guy. Anthony Van Liu Van. Was he thrown out? The guy was she thrown out. She mentioned it after that. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Okay. Hungarian, sorry, not Austrian, my bad. My joke. I don't remember the... How do you know it's Hungarian? Uh, the protect the spleen is written here. Uh, that's a different... Uh, uh, okay, Hungarian, okay, anyway. Uh, to protect the spleen or healer. That's why when you stand sideways, don't point the spleen at the patient. Your spleen, yeah? Yeah, I mean, your spleen. Spleen chakra. You, you stand outside. But don't look awkward. Anyway, we teach this in detail when we teach healing, at least for more advanced students. So, they're there. One. Okay, that's it. I just realized maybe people don't talk about it. So, 
but I have had that experience. By the way, remember Sumi said that, that some people, uh, you know, the the martial artists, or no martial artists, the no, Qigong the people, they Chinese die. You know, here. the question is, why do they die at forty? Why not twenty? They were contaminated already, right? <clears throat> when your body is young, your tendency, remember, to absorb energy is very high. Your tendency to expel energy is very high, right? We were talking about absorption of energy in the previous chapter, but also the way you expel energy very fast. That's why, if you notice, kids babies or you know uh, young kids they if they break a bone they heal much faster they have more energy and not only that but if you compare to an 80 year old uh, if the bone breaks it takes much longer to heal so not only do they have more energy in assimilation they have also uh, in elimination or removal that's why um, um, so what happens is although when they're 20 their bodies are 20 they're contaminated when they sleep or you know it gets expelled out of their system but as their body grows older their ability to expel diseased energy reduces so that's why they get uh, very very affected um, uh, after 40s and 50s so that's why you see young people they don't have many urinary issues but if you're not aware that there's uh, <clears throat> you have to understand when you sit in a bus when you sit in the cinema when you sit in an airport you sit on a plane seat that seat has been sat on by i don't know how many people <laughs> thousands right um, and so the energy, some are good, so I don't know, but there are a lot of donations on that seat, energetic uh, contributions. So when you sit down, your what we call the perineum, the sex to a certain extent gets started to get congested, so uh, or dirt or, or contaminated. So when you're young, you start to expel it out, and then but as your body grows older, this tendency to expel it out becomes less and less and less. So as you grow older, many people start to, uh, uh, as men age, they start to have prostate issues. Or for the women, they start having, having their uterus removed, or they have certain issues with that area. Not because that's the only factor, but according to what we've seen, it's a very contributing factor because almost all these patients, their their perineum was completely blocked and uh, contaminated, wasn't able to expel the dirty energy out. Anyway, yeah. Okay. We... Yes. Um, now, healing people on a regular basis with pranic healing doesn't cause uh, death to the healer at all. Yeah, right? you're looking at because the technique given by Master Chua is very different from what the Chinese healers were using, and for him, it's very important because you want healers to survive, to live long, <laughs> yes, and to stay healthy. Because until and unless you're healthy as a healer, it's not possible for you to emit that what. What emanation? emanation vital, vital emanation vitals. from you, the, the rose color, whatever. It's not possible because it will get, and it comes later in this chapter as well, it gets uh, fused with the unhealthy prana that you have. Yeah. All right, so we'll stop for now. We'll continue with healing on Monday, uh, the chapter on healing on Monday. Yeah, so let's so close our eyes. Today. I know. I stopped less. I tried my best. No, you did a good job. Thank you. Close your eyes, connect down to your palate. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Chua Fox, Sri Lord Maha Guruji Nehru. To all the great ones, to all the great beings of knowledge, light, wisdom. To the great beings and teachers of Theosophy. To the angels of communication, our respective Wi-Fi, to our soul and divine self. We thank you all for your presence, for your light, for your knowledge, for your wisdom. Thank you for blessing us with greater clarity and discernment of these priceless teachings. We especially thank you for helping us assimilate this knowledge and use it to become better healers, better instruments to make this world a better place. With thanks and in full faith, so be it. Asma Namaste, everybody. Thank you so much. We'll see you on Monday, right? If you know of others who usually join, because honestly, I, I don't have the time to look at the names here, uh, but there are quite a few who haven't been able to catch up since uh, you know the break we took. So if you know others who used to be here and are not here, please let them know. I barely yeah. caught up. So. It's natural. All right. They just miss death. No problem. <laughs> but they can be healed. All right. Thank you so much. Atma Namaste. When they come next time, we get mesmerized. <laughs> That's the next chapter. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stop it for all. Enjoy your weekend. No worries. Yes. See you on Monday. Bye. Bye. Next month. Yeah.